The Watership Down podcast is intended for listeners who are familiar with the plot. There will be spoilers. This episode is scripted, narrated, recorded and edited by Newell Fisher. Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 188 in which we will be looking at the first 10 minute segment of the fourth and last episode of the 2018 Netflix version of Watership Down. Once again, there is no barrow keeping this week, so let's get straight into the last episode of the mini series. Netflix miniseries episode 4 part 1 The Bridges Part 1 of episode 4 The Siege runs from the beginning to 11 minutes 20 and the reverse timings are 50 minutes 10 to 38 minutes 50 The equivalent chapters from the book are chapters 34 General Woundwort 38 The Thunder Breaks 39 The Bridges 40 The Way Back and 43 The Great Patrol Although episode 4 of this series is called The Siege, we are not quite done with the previous part of the story yet due to the cliffhanger from the end of the previous episode. As a result, we might expect to find the action begin with Woundwort looming over Bigwig under Kihar Bridge. But no. We first hear an old-fashioned film projector and suddenly we are watching a section of the story filmed on old silent colour cinefilm with accompanying sad piano music. The following action is coded for the viewer as having happened a long time ago, at least for a rabbit. We see a group of three adult rabbits and a young rabbit approaching a cottage garden. The adult in charge speaks to the young rabbit and he nods. He has clearly been told to hang back. The three adults move forward and tuck into some huge cabbages. The leader looks back at the young rabbit occasionally to check he is okay. He looks from side to side for any danger, and then spots a fox creeping up on them. The young rabbit freezes in terror. He looks to the leader, trying to say something. The leader looks at him, sees the panic in his eyes, turns, and is taken by the fox. The young rabbit bolts, followed by the fox, and makes it back to the nearby warren. The fox starts attacking rabbits there as well. The young rabbit keeps running through the chaos, eventually hiding amongst undergrowth, but the fox has found him. It slashes viciously at his left eye, badly injuring it. We hear the cine film run out. After brief titles, we are back under Kihar Bridge in the rain and thunder. The camera zooms out from Woundwart's ruined left eye. The young rabbit of the previous sequence was the young Woundwart. The leader was probably his mother. It turns out we have had a glimpse of the trauma from his early life that has made him what he is. Not that it is any excuse. And for the first time, we have seen an origin story for his injured left eye, a convention that began with the 1978 film and has been followed ever since. As the camera pulls back, Woundwort is breathing heavily. The scene beneath the bridge is as before except that the owls are slowly closing in on the defenceless escape does of Ephrafa and bucks of Watership Down. Bigwig faces down Woundwort, but he is huge. In fact, Woundwort has never been portrayed as being this much larger than Bigwig. Woundwort suddenly breaks the tension by rearing up and screaming as he raises his claws. This is the end of Bigwig and his companions, except that something promptly knocks Woundwort down. It flies under the bridge and comes around for another pass. It is, of course, Kihar, who has returned from the Pequvata just in time and somehow has managed to find exactly where he is needed. We are treated to a fantastic shot of him flying in slow motion, the rain streaming from his wings as he attacks again. This is surely one of this version of Watership Down's most visually impressive moments. Bigwig shouts that the scoundrel came back, Hazel cries out his name joyfully. Kihar attacks the Ephraphran Owsler again and again, putting them to flight. He even tries lifting one off the ground briefly. 
As the owls are in panic, the escape party are urged south from the bridge on Hazel's command. One owlsler tries blocking their path, but Kihar takes him out. A watership down Buck, Dandelion, I think, kicks another owlsler aside. Woundwort orders his owlsler under cover. As they run south, Hazel comes up with a plan. There is no punt. There will be no escape down the river test. His plan? Go into the human warren where the Afrafans may not want to follow. Blackberry and Hawkbit protest, but Hazel insists they have to lose the Afrafans before they head back to Wardship Down. The entire party head for the bridge. In the distance we see the lights of Overton. For any originalist watching, this is surely the low point of this version of Warship Down's betrayal of the original story. It is daylight. The rain has passed. We are back at Ephrafa. Underground, Sainfoin is asking Campion and Orcus why they are chasing down a group of outsiders and does that never caused them any harm. Campion comments that Holly seemed like a decent rabbit before Orcus cuts in to remind them that he killed his brother. Orcus always seems to forget the contribution of the train. There is tension between Campion and Orcus before Sainfoin comments that this isn't about the outsiders. It's all down to Woundwort, who promptly arrives demanding to know who called this meeting. As a glimpse inside the Owlslot of Ephrafa, this has been interesting. But is this the Ephrafa Owlslot of the book? Campion admits he called the meeting. Woundwort has been shut away all day and Campion didn't want to disturb him. This Campion seems to be showing the same kind of strength of character as previous portrayals, though his actions here may have been a bit hasty. Woundwort orders the rest of the Owlslot assembled. Meanwhile... The rabbits of Wardship Down and newly escaped does have gather, gathered by the river test. Out in the open. In full view of a human town. And not far from Ephrafa. Kihar lands and tells Hazel he will be off now. Birds need mothers too, he says, adding that they should get back just fine. He embarrasses Hazel and Clover by saying maybe there will be little Hazels when he comes back to visit. Hazel thanks him saying he would have, they would have died without him. It seems this Kihar is now a friend after all, but not to Bigwig, perhaps, who asks if he is abandoning them again. Kihar's response includes a reference to Bigwig being a plump rabbit. Bigwig's angry reminder of his name causes Kihar to ask why he shouldn't tease his friend. The close relationship between the two from the book has, it seems, been somewhat one way here, and not entirely convincing. And with that... Kihar is off, flying over the nearby town. Back in Ephrafa, the Owlsler has assembled. Woundwort impersonates a reasonable leader by asking anyone who has any concerns to speak up. Sergeant Sainfoin foolishly takes the opportunity to question going after the outsiders. They have a bird under their control, and who knows what other illil they might have power over. A reference to the fox Bigwig led on to their patrol. Woundwort has what he needs. An example. He jumps down from his platform and asks Sainfoin if he is really concerned about the safety of his fellow bucks, or is he just afraid? Sainfoin's admission that he is a bit, a bit provokes an assault. He is backed, terrified, onto a plank over a long drop, a kind of bridge, you might say. The kind of contrived, frightening entrance used in this Ephrafa, as Woundwort says he disgusts him. It is glorious to die out of loyalty to Woundwort. Woundwort says that those not loyal to him are the source of all danger to the Warren. He lists those dangers, and then asks Sainfoin if he is loyal to him, having added that those who are not hate Ephrafa. In an extremely vulnerable position, Sainfoin says he is. Campion is asked the same question. He too is loyal. Woundwort says he doesn't care how long it takes. The outsider's warren will be found and destroyed. He concludes that they should not be afraid of birds or foxes. Ephrafans do not run from Alil. They are the Alil. Back by the river test, Hale is about to display a contrast in leadership style. Fiverr tells him that the does can see the bird that saved them is gone. 
Clover tells him to speak from his heart. His speech to the whole group is humble and warm, saying that he will try to earn their trust as their new leader. As he speaks, we see scenes of the later journey back towards Shipdown. He continues in a vein that suggests they may have further struggles ahead of them, saying it is better to be free and to have to fight for that freedom than never to be free. He asks them to follow each other rather than just him. To raise each other to their strongest selves. During this sequence we see the shot of rabbits silhouetted by a full moon that is a familiar image of this mini-series, mini the one used for the introduction episode. This suggests a longer journey back to the down in order to, to avoid Ephrafa, maybe travelling some way to the west before turning north to the down, especially as the next shot is of the group running by a railway embankment as a train passes. There is only one railway line in that area. To triumphant music, the rabbits approach Watership Down at last. Holly, Strawberry and the other Hutch Doe see them approach. Holly is reunited with Heisenthay, while in the foreground we see Strawberry give Bigwig a special welcome. Holly thanks Heisenthay for saving his life. She says he would have done the same. A thousand times, he replies. There is general joy at this reunion on the down, and Hazel welcomes the new arrivals to their new home. For now, all danger is forgotten. The music reaches a crescendo, as we see a beautiful shot of the beach hanger on Watership Down. Comparison with the book. This section of the miniseries includes a version of the discussions in Ephrafa about what to do now that is far more confrontational than the equivalent in the book, where there is no dissent from what Woundwalt wants to do. But that difference from the book is not where my attention is focused. Far from it. I decided to name this episode after a part of the story that simply does not happen in this version of Warship Down, though bridges do feature in a roundabout way. In episode 72 of this podcast, the much-loved 1978 film version of Watership Down stood trial for a crime against geography, namely Captain Holly's impossible journey to Watership Down from Sandalford via Ephrafa. There have been no full trial since, though further crimes have been identified. In particular, the misappropriation of luring a dog onto the down just to get rid of some sheep that occurred in season two of the TV series in 2000. This was covered in episode 149. And now we come to the latest crime against Watership Down. The loss of the entire escape down the river test. If you recall the first encounter with a river in this miniseries, covered in episode 173, the Sandalford Alza turn up on the bank of the Enborn and pursue our heroes along the bank until they manage to reach the other side. This was the first significant departure from the original story, and it undermined it a great deal. Because in the original book, the whole point of floating on objects to cross water was that most rabbits found it incomprehensible, allowing intelligent rabbits such as Blackberry to use it as a trick. But the chase along the Enborn completely undermines that in order to provide a modern Netflix audience with a cheap thrill early on in the story. By doing so, it makes the use of a punt to get away from the Ephraphans pointless, as they would have simply followed it along what is actually a quite slow-moving river, though having said that, we are somehow expected to believe that the rabbits of Watership Down are completely safe from the Ephraphans while they are at the river. The same Ephraphans who seem perfectly willing to travel far further in the story's final act, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So basically, a key moment in the story was apparently sacrificed for a cheap thrill earlier on in the story. And the courage of the Ephraphans, which is undeniable despite their cruel nature under Woundwort, has been rendered completely inconsistent. I find that unforgivable. No trial. This time there will be summary justice. The Netflix miniseries of Wardship Down is guilty of an unforgivable abuse of storyline, with a lesser charge of abuse of Owsler. When I first watched this series, this was when I think my jaw hit the floor the most. Disappointed really does not cover what I felt at the time. The appropriate word, perhaps, is betrayed. 
Sorry to be so negative on this occasion, but this moment has been coming for some time, and when I decided that I would cover the Netflix series, I also decided I would not hold back over this section of the story. The original beloved novel deserves no less. Next time, back on Watership Down, events move towards the climax of the story. And the miniseries redeems itself. A bit. Mm.